line with good taste okay oh gosh people are still wanting to come on okay fab okay so yeah around 250 species recorded for britain they're not all weedy species they're not all common as muck many are nationally rare or scarce so you're able to find them in very few places in the country many are endemic so they're only found across britain and ireland some are red listed like this beautiful many lobed dandelion in the bottom left or the fen dandelion in the bottom right these are red listed vulnerable in england so these species red listed vulnerable one degree uh, below endangered and um, so many have conservation interest associated with However, um, unfortunately, because as I've said, they're under-recorded, um, because they are so under-recorded, that can mean that trends can't properly be assessed. Um, so yes, many, many dandelion species have conservation interest associated with them. Moving on. Oh gosh. Okay, so let's look at one year um, in the life of a dandelion recorder. So just from this one year, um, because dandelions are so under-recorded, I found two nationally rare plant species. There are five, there have been five species that I found that are new to the county, or should I say vice county. I live on the Sefton coast, which is in an important plant area. And I found eight species new to the Sefton coast, just like this false hook-lobed dandelion here. 
pictured, which is a very common species nationally, but that was new to the Sefton coast. And so when you start to look at dandelions, even apparently widespread species might be new to your area, whether it's just um, the, your, your locality, it might be a county, or it might even be your region. You can find uh, new species to your area quite easily. Okay, so we have around 250 species recorded for Britain, but why do we have so many? Well, the current thinking is that, that we have so many because of ancient hybridization events between apomictic pollen bearing ancestors and fully sexual ancestors. And so when those interbred, eons ago, um, most uh, uh, the, the, the progeny were fixed as being apomictic. Most species are apomictic in the UK and apomixis means that there isn't gene flow between species and populations. But we're missing the key question, what is apomixis? Well, apomixis just means that a plant um, is able to um, be self-fertile. Apomixis is the asexual reproduction through a process known as agamospermy. Essentially, ovules don't need to be fertilized. Um, ovules don't undergo meiosis and plants are self-fertile. And so the progeny are all clones of the mother. Um, it's all quite complex looking at the um, evolution of dandelions. And so if anyone does want to look at some of the literature, um, there's a lovely paper by Van Digic from 1999. And I've put the reference to that in a further reading list at the end of this presentation for, for anyone interested. Okay, so there are a lot of dandelions in Britain. Some of them have conservation interest associated with them, and they're all apomictic, bar one species. Okay, we've established that. I've set some key learning objectives today um, that, that I want everyone to have obtained from this introductory course. So let's have a look at those. I want everyone here to have obtained a basic understanding of dandelion and identification and of the primary resources to use. I want you to know some of the key differences between the groups of dandelions, and we'll talk more about those in a minute. And of course, I want everyone here to have a much greater appreciation of dandelions than you already have, you may have or may not have. And so those are some of the key learning objectives from today's um, introductory course. Fantastic. Okay, so how do we make identification of 250 species that bit less daunting? Well, the, the answer to that are things called sections. Essentially, sections, these sections listed in the middle column, are groups of dandelions with similar morphological characters. And so groups of species are, species are grouped into something called sections. Um, for example, section Nevosa, all of the species there um, are, are, have spotted leaves. Species grouped in section Erythrosperma are all quite dainty and small and have highly dissected leaves. And so we group species in things called sections, and there are nine sections in the UK, all of which are very, very different. So that's how we make things a little bit easier. We group them in things called sections. Okay. And so when I find a dandelion, how do I know what group it belongs to? How do I know what section? that dandelion belongs to? What resources do I need to use to figure that out? Well, there are a few things that you can do. You can look 
in uh, the, the bottom right picture here, Stace, the new floor of the British Isles, which contains a, a lovely key to section level. Um, there's also a nice key to group level in the Dandelion Handbook by BSBI, Botanical Society of Britain and Ireland. Alternatively, if you don't have either of those resources, what I've also done with permission is I've transposed um, a dandelion section key onto a little website that I made. And my section key on this web link just highlighted here at the bottom of the page, the last bullet point, um, I've also illustrated with pictures. And so features that are referred to in my section key are nicely illustrated with pictures. So that's how we, we know what section a dandelion belongs to when we're looking at it. That's how we know what group um, a dandelion belongs to. But once we get to section, how do we get to know what species we're looking at? Well, there are a few more resources that we can use. One of which, again, is this dandelion handbook which is the Bible for dandelion identification. It's a comprehensive guide of all the dandelions in the UK and it's incredibly useful. It's one of my favorite books, in fact. But again, if you don't have the handbook, there are also things called online plant cribs. Now the BSBI, again, the Botanical Society of Britain and Ireland, have these wonderful things called plant cribs. And all the plant crib is, is essentially an information sheet that tells you about um, particular sections of dandelions, but also plant cribs have wonderful keys on them. There's an extract um, just here in the, in the bottom left picture. Um, and so these keys are illustrated with beautiful pictures as well. And so, yes, you can use the dandelion handbook or the free online plant cribs by BSBI. You don't need to spend massive amounts of money on reading material, which is what I love about this group. Okay, on to the next slide. As well as those uh, wonderful resources to get to group level and also to get to species level, what I found is particularly useful is um, the Museum of Cardiff's Dandelions of Cardiff's web page. Now they list about 100 species on their web page, many of which have pictures attached to species labels. And so if I think I've found a hook-lobed dandelion, Taraxacum hamartum, I'll go onto the Dandelions of Cardiff web page um, and see if their picture looks like my specimen. And so I found that website incredibly useful. Okay, of course, with dandelions, there are some caveats to identification. They are a hard group to begin with, but something is only difficult until it's not, would be my advice. Dandelions are plastic. When something is plastic, it means it's quite variable. So dandelions can be quite variable in some of their characters that they um they exhibit. Um, another caveat to identifying dandelions, uh, another thing to be aware of, try and avoid stressed or damaged plants. If you found a, a dandelion that's been uh, half chewed to death or uh, mowed off, try and avoid that because you won't have all the characters that you'll need to identify it. Um, one thing that's helped me a lot with dandelion identification, I'm certainly no expert, but one thing that's helped me a lot is having something called voucher specimens. So uh, the bottom right picture here, I've pr I press um, my dandelions and I stick them to bits of paper for reference. Of course, pictures um, are also really good for reference. With dandelions, it's important to have all the characters that you need to get to section, to get to group level, and to species level. So try and look for plants when they're in late bud and early flower. The ideal time being now, between March and May. And one last 
caveat before we get onto the, the meat of this introductory course. Verification of records is really important. If you think you found a boatman's dandelion, it's really important that you, you run your record past an experienced taraxicologist, someone with experience dealing with dandelions. Um, if you're a BSBI member, you can also message the BSBI referee and have your records verified. So verification of records, really, really important. Okay. But they all look so similar. I hear you cry. Well, there are a few key features that you need to be aware of when you're looking at dandelions, because although they might all look so similar, I can assure you they are all very, very different. And so what I'm going to do now is talk about some of the key features to be aware of when you're looking at dandelions. Okay, so the first thing to be aware of is pollen. Most species, about 80%, over 80% of our dandelions species in Britain produce pollen, but some don't. About 12% um, do not produce pollen, just like this lovely green bracted dandelion here. Okay. And so the presence of pollen is something to be aware of when you're looking at dandelions. Another key feature to be aware of are these lovely little scaly appendages at the bottom of these developing buds here called exterior bracts. Exterior bracts matter an awful lot. In some species, they might be erect and oppressed and or oppressed, just like this bottom right picture here. So you can see these um, scaly appendages are upright, so they are erect. Don't laugh too hard. OK. Um, or they could be uh, recurved, just like the next picture over, bent downwards. And so the position of these scaly appendages can be very different depending on the species that you're looking at. Um, sometimes you can also have exterior bracts with a border. So if we look at the third picture along, you can see highlighted on these scaly bits, a lovely membranous white border. And so I describe these exterior bracts as having a distinct border. By contrast, the next picture to the right does not have that membranous border. And so those exterior bracts are unbordered. OK, so exterior bracts and pollen, presence of pollen, um, can be very different depending on species and maybe even section. Um, it all depends. One more thing to be very aware of are the petals, or as they should be correctly called, ligules. Um, they can be striped in a beautiful array of different colours, from drab browns and greys to bright in-your-face pinks, reds, and so on. The colour of these ligule stripes highlighted here varies depending on the species that you're looking at. What can also vary, dependent upon species, is these ligule teeth. So the very end of the petal, the very end of the ligule. If you can see here, the ligule teeth on this picture are noticeably darker than the ligule stripe. Um, in some species, ligule teeth might be black. In others, it could be yellow, they could be orange, they could be bright purple. And so ligule stripes and ligule teeth are something to be aware of, another key feature. Okay, and sometimes as well, it might also be important to notice um, what the dimensions of the fruits are like, or the echines. And so the dimensions of the echine body, labelled here, the, or the cone, might be different 
depending on the species. The colour of the seed uh, or a keen may be very different depending on species. And so sometimes it's also important to um, know what the seeds are like, although it's, they tend to be less important um, when it comes to keying out section and keying out species, by and large. Okay. And of course, moving away from the sexual bits, the flowers, let's talk about the leaves. Leaves can be very, very different depending on the section and depending on the species that you're looking at. They can be very toothy, very dentate, or they could be entire. Um, they could be have a bright purple midrib or it, and petiole, or it could be green or pinkish. The midrib might also have green or purple interwoven strands in it, which I hope you can see in this picture here. It's like a stripy midrib. Leaves might be deeply lobed, so heavily dissected, like this top right picture here, really deeply dissected leaves. Or well, they could be entire. Um, what can also change depending on the species is the shape and character of the terminal lobe. So this triangular bit at the end of the leaf here, or the, the shape and character of the lateral lobes may change depending upon the species. So these duty out bits. Okay. Um, and what I really like is this wonderfully illustrated image. There's a lot of illustration, there's a lot going on here, um, but um, I, I've been kindly allowed to share this from the Dandelion Handbook. It's a beautiful illustration of all of the key features nicely labelled. Um, I'll be making this PowerPoint available afterwards, so don't worry if you're not able to, to um, copy things down in full just yet. Um, one last thing to be aware of when you're navigating keys to get to group level, to get to section level or to species level is Google. Um, I've, been, I've been looking at plants for a very long time. I'm a plant obsessive. But even now, I'll come across plenty of words that I don't fully understand. Like, um, and so what I find to be a very useful resource is Google. Um, if I don't know what a ligule is in dandelions, I can Google that. Um, and so Google is also a very helpful resource to use um, when, when you're navigating keys. Okay. Fantastic. So we're past all that. Let's actually look at some of these fabulous things called sections. So what we are going to do now, we talked about sections. In the UK, there are nine groupings of dandelions. Oh gosh, what's happened there? Um, Obliquia all the way down to Ruderalia. What we're going to do now is look at some of the key features of these five highlighted sections. And the reason I want to concentrate on those is because they're common and widespread, common and or widespread sections. By contrast, these four sections above, obliquia down to taraxicum, contain species that tend to be very rare, um, restricted to Scottish mountains and sand dunes and species rich fens. And so we're going to ignore those just for today. Okay. So let's actually get to look at some of these wonderful groups of dandelions. Sorry, I think something's um, just annotated a line there. Okay, sorted. Let's look at some of the sections. So the first section. Um, now, although Navosa and Erythrosperma and all these names, they might be a bit off-putting. I'm hoping by the end of this, um, by the end of going through all of these sections, they'll be much more appealing. So let's look at section Navosa first off. It's probably my favourite section. They are the spotty dandelions, where leaf spots cover about 
uh, 10% or over of the leaf surface usually, just like this beautiful spotted dandelion down here. Really beautiful um, group of, of dandelions is section Navosa. This section is commonest in the north and west of Britain. And so section Navosa, the spotted dandelions. Another thing to be aware of with this section is pollen is often absent. Um, there are a fair few species that don't have pollen. Section Navosa. A couple of things to be aware of when we're looking for leaf spots on dandelions. Um, just here. So let's look at leaf damage. I come across dandelions quite frequently that have been battered and bruised and bitten. And so it's important to differentiate between what is leaf damage and what is genuine pigmentation. OK, so with leaf damage, if we look at this picture here, if you look closely on the leaf, you'll often see that there are bumps and scars um, and it often produces this sort of purplish pigmentation. By contrast, section, section Navosa plants produce these very dark spots. And if you turn the leaf over, um, it should be a complete green on the underside of the leaf. These spots on Navosa plants tend to be a very dark blackish colour and the texture of the leaf doesn't change so you can't see any obvious scars. Um, another thing to be aware of when we're looking at leaf spots with these spotty dandelions is a lot of species have something called interlobe blotching. So if we look between the jutty out bits, the lateral lobes, we on this bottom left picture, we can see this really dark pigmentation, this blotchiness between the lobes. And so there's, we need to differentiate between genuine leaf pigmentation on the right and leaf damage and interlobe blotching. So there's section Navosa. Who needs to go on safari to see cheetahs and jaguars when we have spotty dandelions? Okay, next section. We're going to look now at section Hamata. This is a ubiquitous group, a very widespread and often common group, often associated with weedy habitats like road verges, waste ground, gardens, and so on. This section um, is often associated with hamate leaf lobes. Hamate just means hook shaped. If we look at the picture on the bottom right, we can see these bent backwards jutty out bits, leaf lobes. So if, if you have hook shaped leaf lobes, you may have a section hamata. With section hamata, you also have this fantastic midrib with interwoven purple and green strands, which I hope you can all see from this picture here. So in the picture in the middle, it's a purple midrib with interwoven green strands. And so all species in section Hamata have that character. Another couple of things to be aware of with this section is those exterior bracts, the scaly appendages at the bottom of flowers and developing buds. So the exterior bracts in section Hamata tend to be spreading, so to a 90 degree angle, um, or they could be recurved, bent backwards, just like in this bottom left picture here. And another thing to be aware of with section Hamata is every single species has pollen present. And so if you find a plant um, with an inter with, with, without pollen, you won't have a section Hamata. OK, let's move on to the next section, the next group, the erythrosperma. These are the lesser dandelions the little diddy dandelions. And they're also one of my favorite groups. They're so cute. 
Um, this section contains Britain's smallest species, the ruddy dandelion, which is pictured just below here. Um, uh, it was actually the cover of the very first slide. Beautiful plant, the ruddy dandelion. Okay, so section Erythrosperma, the lesser dandelions, are characterized usually by these very, very dissected, almost pinnate leaves, which we can see um, particularly well, hopefully, on this picture on the left. Very deeply dissected leaves. They tend to be very small plants with capitula or flower heads, um, rarely exceeding three centimeters in diameter. This section is widespread and it's typical of very dry habitats. You'll often find them in abundance um, in places like limestone grasslands, chalk grasslands, sand dunes. And so yes, very widespread section, typical of dry habitats. Okay, hopefully by this point, you can all start to appreciate how very, very different dandelions are. So we've looked at the hook lobe dandelions, the spotty dandelions, and the diddy dandelions so far, the lesser dandelions. So let's move on to the next fabulous section, section Celtica. So just like the hamata that we've already talked about, the hook-lobed dandelions, section Celtica have those same stripy midribs with the green and purple interwoven strands. However, unlike the hamata, they very, very rarely, if ever, have hamate leaf lobes. They rarely have leaf lobes that are bent back and hook-shaped. Um, Lateral lobes are usually in five to six pairs as well. Uh, and hopefully we can see that uh, the, the difference between section Celtica and Hamata in this plant here, the Olegard's dandelion. Um, okay, so unlike Hamata as well, which have spreading to recurved exterior bracts, those little scaly appendages, Section Celtica tend to have spreading to erect exterior bracts, spreading to upright exterior bracts, which again we can see in this lo lovely series of pictures of Olegard's dandelion. Okay, another feature that's typical for section Celtica um, is the petioles and midribs, often bright purple, um, and also. Pollen can be present or absent. So about one third of all Celtica species have an absence of pollen, which you don't have in section Hamata. Plants in section Celtica um, are often associated with very good habitats, quote unquote good habitats, like woodland edges and hay meadows and dune slacks and hedge banks. Um, as opposed to the weedy habitats that you typically associate Hamata with. Okay, so we're four sections down. We were going to look at five. Let's take a look at the very last section. Section Ruderalia. Now, unlike section Celtica and section Hamata, Ruderalia has a consistently coloured midrib. So there are no interwoven green and purple strands, which hopefully you can see quite well in this top, uh, the, the picture on the, on the top right here. Okay, the exterior bracts are usually recurved and they tend to be quite big. So the outer row of those exterior bracts tend to be over a centimetre long, quite big things. They're often robust plants with a tendency towards weedy habitats. So this group you're, more, you're most likely to find in your garden, in your lawn, on roadsides and so on. Although you do find them um, in a great range of habitats. Okay, for most species, bar four, um, pollen is present. 
the Ruderalia are by far the commonest and wi most widespread section. About half of all dandelion species in Britain are in section Ruderalia. However, because there are so many species in this section, that makes them the hardest and most difficult group to identify to species level. And so what I advise when it comes to section Ruderalia is once you know you've got a Ruderalia plant, avoid it. And that advice might sound a little bit off-putting. You want to know what dandelion is in front of you. However, when it comes to plant identification in general, um, when it, oh, sorry, great. When it comes to plant identification in general, you don't gravitate towards the difficult groups, the grasses, sedges and rushes. You gravitate first towards the prettier, big, in-your-face stuff, like this beautiful red campion here, and you make a natural transition from the least difficult to more challenging stuff. And so what I advise when it comes to dandelions is, is make that natural transition. Learn about those sections with the least species first. Learn about the Celtica, Hamata, Erythrosperma, Nevosa, before you try and learn um, about species contained in, in this section. Okay, so that was my whistle-stop tour. Um, to, to dandelions in Britain. However, oops, sorry, I'm trying to click onto the next slide. Okay, fab. However, it doesn't end there. Now I've gone over dandelions, their conservation interest, and some of the sections. What I want you to do is this I'd like you to find three dandelions. And what I then want you to do, whether you use the handbook, you use Stace, or if you don't have those, you use my online um, plant uh, section key. Whether you use any of those resources, I want you to find three dandelions and I want you to identify them to section level. That's what I want you to do. If you're feeling extra ambitious, what I'd really, really love you to do is if you find any of those four widespread sections, so the Hamata, the hook-lobed dandelions, Celtica, Navosa, the spotty dandelions, or Erythrosperma, the lesser dandelions, if you find any of those four sections, what I then want you to do is try and have a go at identification to species level using those online plant cribs that I've talked about. Now those are all easily accessible. Um, if you type into Google uh, BSBI plant crib and then follow that up with uh, the section name, um, you'll, you'll easily be able to, to access those plant cribs. Um, so yes, I'd like you to try and have a go at identification to species using those plant cribs and the BSBI dandelion handbook if you have it. Once you've done those things, what I then want you to do is post pictures of what you found uh, to the Dandelions of Britain and Ireland Facebook group. Or alternatively, um, I'd like you to post pictures of what you found onto Twitter and you can do that using the hashtag dandelion fest and once you've posted what you found I will aim to get back to you and uh, let you know how you've done and hopefully give you some hints and tips. So that's what I want you to do next. Fabulous. Now before I go uh, and, and on to some questions what I'd really like to talk about is the BSBI, the Botanical Society of Britain and Ireland. They are an amazing, I don't work for them, uh, however, they are an amazing organisation. Being a member has so, so many perks, uh, one of which is access to something I mentioned earlier, the BSBI referees. 
um, which are essentially a group of experts that specialise in particular plants. And so if you're a BSBI member, you can message the BSBI um, dandelion referee some pictures of what you found and he'll help you get to know what you've got. Um, so yes, BSBI, fantastic organisation. They have so much learning material, really responsive on social media. What I'd really like to recommend everyone do is join them, please. Um, off the top of my head, I think it's £18 for a student membership and 30 for um, just everyone else. Um, okay. So what I'd like to ask everyone to do now, there's a lot of people here today, um, but I, if you have any burning questions, just write them in the chat. Um, and I'll try my very, very best to get back to you. Okay. Fabulous. Um, and as I say, as I say, um, this PowerPoint should be available afterwards. I will be uploading this recording to my YouTube channel. Um, and also the BSBI have come up with a wonderful dandelion page that I believe has just been published this morning. Um, and hopefully this recording and or the presentation will be freely available there too. So yes, if anyone has any questions, please do type them in the chat. Um, okay. Ooh. Ah, some people are saying that Dandel my website, dandelionsectionkey.weebly.com is unavailable. What I'll do is I'll make a note of that and I'll amend that now or after this at least. Um, and I'll sort that out. Uh, Can we give some tips on equipment? Uh, Ruth has asked. Yeah, sure. Um, so with equipment wise, it's to be honest, I've found that I've never really needed much more than a hand lens. Um, and, and a hand lens comes in really beneficial when you're looking at some of those key characters that I mentioned. So like the presence of pollen um, or to see whether those scaly appendages, the exterior bracts have a border, a membranous border or not. So really, um, hand lens is key, but... Um, I've never found much more equipment to be really needed. Okay. Ooh, a lot of people asking about edibility. Um, to my knowledge, every every species is edible. Uh, however, I'm, I'm sure uh, how, how however bitter one species is might be different to another. I'd also discourage people digging up very rare species like fen dandelions and eating them. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, where are the slides going to be available? Okay, so what I'm gonna do, once everyone has finished typing, um, once everyone's finished typing, I will put my email address in the chat. I'll be posting the PowerPoint and or recording onto the British Ecologists Facebook group. I'll be posting it onto Twitter. Uh, and as I said, it should hopefully be available on the BSBI website as well. Okay, Phoebe O'Brien, is Ruderalia midrib? Okay, so with Ruderalia, although the midrib, I've, I've talked about the consistent color of the midrib, doesn't have those well it doesn't have those interwoven green and purple bits that being said um, midribs can be very different uh, colors for ruderalia they could be pink they could be purple they could be green um, 
and they could be everything in between. So they're, no, they're not always green for Ruderalia. The colour can be different, but the key thing to note is that it doesn't, Ruderalia don't have those green uh, and purple interwoven strands. Okay. Hi Josh, hand lens 20 times or 10 times is best. Um, I've got a hand lens with a 10 times lens and a 20 times lens. Either is better, but of course, higher magnification might you might find more beneficial. So um, either is fine, but 20 might be more beneficial. Okay. Can you explain how to take and make a good voucher specimen? Ooh, okay, sure. Um, if you, what I found is it can be a bit difficult sometimes, but the key thing with making your own voucher specimens, pressing dandelions, is to dry them really quickly, uh, ideally within sort of 42 hours. And so once I cut it, I cut a dandelion at the base, put it between two bits of paper. And um, what I've done is I will put that specimen in my airing cupboard with loads of books piled on top of it, um, which helps it dry quickly. Um, one thing that's important with taking voucher specimens as well is try and change the paper so you don't just have a soggy mess at the end. Um, and you keep it dry. Great. The red midrib, at which height should it be assessed? Um, talking about midribs um, and that stripiness, that character, that, that should be consistent throughout the midrib. Um, question from Daniel there. Okay, some people have posted some links to uh, hand lenses. Oh, Louise Marsh has. Okay. Uh -huh. Rubus next. Yep, blackberries are another group of apomictic species, um, who, who which also have these hybrid origins. Uh, another fantastic group. Okay. Illegal to dig up plants without landowner's permission. Thanks for pointing that out, Martin. Yep. So of course, if you're, if you're digging up dandelions, uh, if you're picking dandelions from land that isn't yours, technically you should have landowner's permission. Um, Okay, are there any more questions? Oh gosh, so many people in the chat. Okay. A lot of people assume that all dandelions are Taraxacum officinale, one species. Does this make you mad? Um, from Alyssa. Um, no. <laughs> is the answer to that and um, when, when you begin to look at dandelions which hopefully you've seen when i've gone over some of those sections when you begin to look at dandelions although they might look similar initially grasses all look similar i'm sure to everyone initially um, but when you really begin to look at them i can assure you they're all very very different um yeah. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Voucher specimen notes. Yep. So um, if anyone wanting to press dandelions and make voucher specimens um, so that they can refer to them in the, in the future, there are notes available on the BSBI website and on the plant cribs as well. Okay. Does it matter which version of Stace you use? Ooh. Um, let me just check. I've got an old version. I'm sure that it won't matter. Um, let me just check. H 
two seven. Boom, boom, boom. No, no, it doesn't matter. The key is virtually the same. Marvelous. Okay, some people saying about. Oh, my website seems to be working fine at the moment. Oh, great. Good to know. Are you likely to find more than one species in an area? Well, the answer to that is yes. Um, yes, <laughs> I've found quite a few species new to my area. Um, all of those species I mentioned early on. So two, I found two nationally rare species five species new to the county, eight new to the coast, they're all in my area. Um, I even got into the local news about one, very rare dandelion that I found, which is great. Um, so, so the answer to that is yes, you can have a, a large number of species in your area. Okay. Let's see. Oh gosh. Well, species. Does drying make the dandelion more difficult to identify later? The answer to that is yes. Sometimes it does. Um, however, that's why with voucher specimens, it's important to take notes about some of the features. Uh, well, one more thing that I actually do, as well as pressing dandelions, so I can refer to those later, is I actually grow them. I, I grow a lot of species in my garden. Um, and of course, I, I take pictures of them. Um, so yes, will blackberries be another webinar? Maybe, um, maybe one day. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is officinalis ruderalia? Uh, no, it isn't. So a lot of people um, refer to dandelions as Taraxacum officinale ag. Um, essentially, that it just refers to the aggregate as a whole um, and it doesn't refer officially doesn't refer to any particular section are there a lot of hybrids between species no is the answer to that simon um, because all of these plants are self-fertile and uh, bar one species you tend not to get any hybrids at all which makes things a lot easier um because they they don't need fertilization they're apomictic okay um mm -mm -mm. okay boom 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 Right. Do hybrids exist again? Okay, so in terms of hybrids, as I say, they're, they're all apomictic bar one species in section Ruderalia. Um, so you do get hybrids with that one species, but um, I've never seen it. And um, it's, it's very, very un uncommon to get those hybrids. Um, as far as I'm aware, okay. Dun dun dun. How many species are there in Europe? I don't know. Um, a lot more than there are in Britain. <laughs> um, is the answer to that one. Um. A lot of people asking about those voucher specimens, which I've already mentioned. So uh, the BSBI have a lot of advice on how to make good voucher specimens. If you look that up on their website. Okay.
if they're apomictic, why produce? Oh, I haven't gone on the next slide for useful resources. Um, if they're apomictic, why do they produce pollen? Um, they don't need to, essentially. Um, I, 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 yeah, they, they, they don't need to, but they do is the simple answer. I did mention a study earlier on by Van Digit, which is a fantastic study. If anyone wants to have an actual uh, a, a deeper look into the literature and some of the origins of dandelions, there is this fantastic study, um, which I hope everyone can see just here, um, by Van Digit, 1999. And I've put a little link there. Okay. Okay. Do, do, do. Okay. So I think um, those are the majority of topics that I've covered. Oh, there's a new message. Okay, so I think those are the majority of topics that I've covered. Uh, what I'm going to do now, if I could just ask everyone to refrain um, from writing anything in the chat, that would be great. Um, and I will pop my email in the chat for anyone who wants a copy of this PowerPoint. Your PowerPoint is already online. Fantastic. Stephen has uh, put a lovely link to the BFBI's dandelion page that should have been released this, was just released this morning. Uh, so my PowerPoint's on there if anyone wants it. Um, and I will ask everyone at this point now just to refrain uh, typing in the group chat. Um, and I just want to thank everyone really. And um, we've had over 300 participants today which i absolutely did not expect um so thank you to everyone and um i shall see you all again okay